Al-Latif. It's a name that appears seven times in the Quran and is one of the most popular pronounced on the tongues of people of every generation as they go through hardship. They call this name in weakness and in fear, in pain and in tears. It's simply Al-Latif. Now, what does Al-Latif mean? Ibn Al-Lathir, in his tafsir, he basically says that Al-Latif is the one who combines two things. Number one is a rifq fil fi'l, uh, care and gentleness in actions. المصالح, and he has knowledge, intricate knowledge of benefits and how to bring them about to whomever he decrees from his creation. And so Al-Latif combines these two pillars. The first is gentle care. And that's why you'll find that people call upon this name when they are in need of gentleness and care and when they're going through hardship. And number two is intricate knowledge of benefits and how to bring them about to whomever he wishes. This name should inspire trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's legislation and in his decree, both his qadr and his shara. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's legislation even if you don't comprehend completely why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make something forbidden. I remember once receiving a question from a girl who was 14 years old and her question was, why can't I have a boyfriend? It's not like I'm committing murder or anything. You know, in her mind, she didn't see what was wrong with maybe holding hands and taking cute pictures with a boy that she liked, the romance and excitement of having somebody like you. But there's such a wide range of consequences just beyond the limit of her imagination that she didn't see. And that can be the case for all of us with a wide variety of issues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mulk, Does not the one who created know when he is a latif, he's the well acquainted? So a latif also means the subtle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تدركه الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار وهو اللطيف الخبير Allah says, He is not encompassed by vision, but He encompasses all vision. And He's a latif, He's the subtle, the well acquainted. But let's go back to the meaning of gentleness and care and intricate knowledge of benefits and how to bring them about from where you don't expect. Intricate knowledge and intricate care. So we look at Gaza and we say, Ya Latif. We don't see where the good is. We don't have the knowledge of how you'll bring this about but we know that you have more care for them than we do. And you have better knowledge of how to bring them about. You know, we look at Sudan and we say, Ya Latif, this country is collapsing by the day, but we have reliance on you and belief in you that you're able to bring them to a praiseworthy consequence. We look at the Ummah of Muhammad, that's weak and silenced, marginalized, and we say, Ya Latif, we don't see where the light is at the end of the tunnel because we don't have your knowledge, but we know that there is light because this is the world that you created. Now, when discussing this name, scholar after scholar after scholar points to the story of a single prophet as an illustration of the name Al-Latif. And that's the story of Yusuf Alayhi salam A boy who's safe in the company of a loving mother and father who has a dream that the sun and the moon are prostrating to him and his eventual destiny. But on the way to that destiny, what does he have to go through? He has to go through being thrown in a well, and that's horrible. And then he's sold as a slave, and that's horrible. And then he's brought to Egypt and sold as a slave, and that's horrible. And then he's a slave in a house where he's being seduced, and that's horrible. And then there's this false accusation against him. And then he goes to prison, and you're looking at the story from the outside in, and you're like, man, this just keeps getting worse. This just keeps getting worse. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is maneuvering him for his eventual destiny. And there might have even been moments where Yusuf alayhi salam might have been deflated where he finally has a prisoner whose, whose dream he interprets. And Yusuf says to him, Remember me with your Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but he forgot. And so Yusuf stays in prison for years more, years. He's in prison. Every day that Yusuf is in prison is, a, is an injustice. Every day it's a false accusation. Every day he was falsely detained. He was deserving of mobilization and hashtags and free Yusuf campaigns. But we learn from this name of Allah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't work on our time. He works on his time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is delaying Yusuf to fast track him. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had allowed that prisoner to remember Yusuf and get him out, Yusuf might have gotten out, but he wouldn't have gotten an audience with the king. The king has no need for anybody at that point in time, in that timeline, for anybody with the skill of dream interpretation. So at best, Yusuf might have been able to get out. Maybe he would have went back to his homeland. Maybe he would have reunited with his family. But when does the prisoner remember Yusuf? when the king has a dream that he's obsessing over. And so when Yusuf comes out of prison, he's brought into an immediate audience with the king. The king gets to interview Yusuf personally, and he sees his integrity, he sees his talent, his personality, and he says, Amin. He says, today you are with us trustworthy and given authority. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delayed Yusuf to fast track him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be delaying us to fast track us. Allah may be delaying what we love so much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can raise us higher, that we can be stronger, that we be presented with a better opportunity tomorrow than what's available for us today. 
even if we're screaming ceasefire today, it may be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is delaying us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to bring an end not just to the ceasefire, but to the entire occupation. And that's not something that's too great for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Yusuf, when we continue in his story and his parents come from the desert and his brothers come, Yusuf alayhi salam, what does he say? at the end. My Lord was good to me when he brought me out of prison and brought you out of the desert. And then he says, Inna Rabbi latifun lima yasha. My Lord is latif for whatever he wishes. This is the interpretation of my dream that my, my Lord made true. Qad ja'alaha Rabbi haqqa. My Lord has made it true. Until he says, my Lord is latif for whatever he wishes. My Lord was able to maneuver all of this to the interpretation of the dream. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, we narrate the stories of the prophets to you to grant your heart resolve. You know, there are undoubtedly, there are those of us who are in the prison of our own story, like Yusuf was in prison, in the well of our own story, like Yusuf was in the well, in the house of Al-Aziz, of our own story, like Yusuf was in the house of Al-Aziz, but we have high optimism in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there will come a day where we will look at our lives, look at our communities, look at our ummah and say, قَدْ جَعَلْهَا رَبِّي حَقَّى This is my dream. My Lord has made it true. Because my Lord is Latif. Because my Lord is Latif for whatever He wishes. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His name Al-Latif to be gentle with the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the goodness that we see and to guide us to the goodness that is so subtle that we don't see yet. Inna Rabbi Latifun lima yasha.